Lenny! Oh, yes! Oh, God, yes! Welcome back to Is It Still Good? This is the show where we take our rose-colored glasses, we receive head trauma, and we are forced to misplace those glasses and instead of wearing them, write notes to ourselves constantly <coughs> to remind ourselves of our past. And it's without the glasses and with the constant fresh set of eyeballs and enhanced vision that we are forced to gaze upon the youth culture that we once held so dear. And we ask ourselves if it's still good. We are two grown up film students. We hate growing up. I'm Bear Kennedy. I am in Chicago and spring has sprung. And joining me as always... Andrew Carter in Los Angeles. I mean, it's basically spring all year round, but you can feel some spring in the air. It was a very nice day today. I am also fully vaccinated. Me too. Got um, the uh, number two earlier this week. Awesome. And are you, so how long do you have until you have like what, another week until you're inoculated? J- just about. They say 14 days, but I'm getting on an airplane in a week from today. So okay. we're, we're hoping it, it kicks in. Yeah. Fingers I'm crossed. fully, I'm fully inoculated as of last saturday so we can and and now we can start going outside without masks um how do you feel about that how do you do do you Uh, do you worry that people are gonna judge you or come up to you i don't care about that so much i I don't mind wearing a mask outside or anywhere if i'm walking around outside i i kind of haven't been wearing one forever because you're fucking outside yeah um especially if i'm running like probably not gonna do it but inside do you have one with you while you run no or is it Okay, because I bring one with me while I run, and I I'll 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 like kind of hook it up to my ears, but pull it down usually, um, and then I'll just pull it up if I pass someone who's also wearing a mask. I have large ears, and I feel like I really feel the stress on them when I do that, and uh, I just try to avoid people, give them space. But realistically, outside, right. that shit dissipates so quick. Yeah, um, it's it, you know the the solution to pollution is dilution. And right. you can't, unless someone fucking breathes directly in you. Right. Uh, there's just not enough particles in the air as you're outside passing someone to realistically do anything. Also, if you're um, six feet or more apart, then yeah, like, I mean, and not, when you're running, it's not like you're running next to these people. You're running past them. Yeah. Cause I'm super fucking fast. I'm just whipping ass up and down. Like the you're the fastest there. guy I know probably. Yeah. I'm unbelievably fast. And you're the um, fastest guy you know. Yeah, hundred percent. I've just been working on the speed, um, you know, keeping the knees and the Achilles in check as I get older. Things things are breaking down more. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't mind wearing stretches. a mask indoors or in any situation where they're like, hey, you gotta wear a mask. Yeah, I don't I either. F- I don't I, give a I, shit. I think the people that are complaining can, can just go fuck themselves. It's like it's not I, hard. It's insane. It's not a big deal. Just it's just really not. Do. Yeah, yeah, grow up. Um, it's funny when and speaking of growing up, this is gonna be ironic that I just said that because when you started the podcast and you said who you know we are two guys who receive head trauma i thought you were gonna say who receive head and i was like oh what's yeah. what's what's that about <laughs> we're getting sexual <laughs> early on yeah and i was like oh my god that's what we're discussing this week no it's off the windy are, road with me yeah this week we are discussing christopher nolan's 20 year old classic memento um this is a film that came out it premiered uh I thought it was Sundance, but I was wrong. It was Venice uh, in September of 2000, and then it was released in the U.S. in March of 2001, so just about 20 years ago. Um, And this was a film I remember seeing posters for. I remember hearing about it because I was 12 when it came out, and I feel like 12, 12 years old is just when you start becoming... I, I, maybe I'm making a generalization, but at least for me, it was just when I started becoming aware of, of like every movie, like That's every time a movie came out and there was a review in the paper by Roger Ebert on a Friday, I read Hell the review yes. Hell and yes. I would, yeah, Ebert, man, he was my guy. I was in the same room as him once and I didn't go up to him. I was too intimidated. I, it's one of my <laughs> biggest regrets. Um, he, <clears throat> he probably would have talked to you. I've also heard a lot of stories yeah. about people that wrote to him. Uh, and even wrote like bad stuff to him, then he would respond. 
Um, yeah. yeah. Not, he wouldn't like he was, match he, your, your tone. He'd like respond like, Hey, I hope you change your mind about this. Like life's short. Right. When I was in the same room as him, he it was actually at the DGA awards in 2009 and he was receiving an award. Um, he had lost his ability he to was, speak he, at that yeah, point. Was he post jaw? It was yes. Um, but his wife Chaz was, was with him and I saw him and I was like, I just was like, I can't, I, I just, I, it came from a place. I just didn't want to bother him. Like, yeah, you yeah. know, and I, and I, and I think knowing that maybe he couldn't talk back, I didn't want to like make his, you know, I didn't want to like make him translate anything to his wife and put her through anything or whatever. But I looking, if I ever get a chance to meet his wife, I will certainly say something now. Um, Cause his, his movie reviews like is what got me into movies. Um, and basically I remember when Memento came out, but of course I was way too young to see it. I didn't see it until I was in college and I just rewatched it at today as we were recording this and I remembered it for sure, but not the details and not well enough, um, to remember like the twists and the reveals and stuff like that. Uh, this was a movie that I heard a lot about because of the guy who made it because I saw Insomnia and Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. And then people were, oh, you got to see Memento and you got to see Memento. Um, when was the first time you saw this movie? I either saw this, I think I was about 15. I think I started like, I remember like going to the movies was a normal, regular activity right around 12 as well. But I didn't like get yeah. into like become like a movie guy till I was about 14. Okay. And uh, after that, that's when I got into like DVDs, renting shit at Blockbuster all the time. That's when they had yeah. changed their model to the like 30 bucks a month and you can take out any two DVDs at a time. So you didn't have to like oh, pay. Wow. You, just, you just scanned it, which was fucking awesome. So I either saw this on DVD when I was like 15 or I caught it on um, like cable at that time. Uh, As I was thinking back, when was the first time I saw it? And I was thinking about, I don't know if you remember this, but IFC, the channel, Mm -hmm. used to be awesome. It used to be, it used to, it's allegedly still does stand for the independent film channel, Mm -hmm. but they used to just program movies all the time. Yeah. And now if you turn it on, they, they have like, syndicated two and a half men with full yeah, it's commercials a little weird. and shit. It's but very they still, weird. But they still uh, they still uh, broadcast the Independent Spirit Awards, which are awesome. I, I mean, I guess that's okay. I know that every every everyone who gets into TV, every channel, every streaming service, frankly, has the same arc, basically. You come out the gate, super hot, you have awesome <clears throat> shit. Uh, then you're forced to come up with, you know, original programming. And then you're forced to come up with cheap programming. Um, and it's really sad to watch that happen to things that you like. You're, you're watching it happen now with Netflix. Uh, but right. IFC used to, used to not have commercials, used to play unedited full movies all the time. And Yeah, I remember that. They, they used to play stuff just 24 hours. So I used to stay up really late if I saw shit I wanted to see and like watch just double features of stuff from like, you know, 11 to maybe three or four in the morning. Right. And they, they did not, they had no commercials. If a movie ended, like, like I think Memento is like an hour and 50 or so. Mm-hmm. So it'd be a two hour block. And then in the last 10 minutes, they just play like some kind of special feature or some kind of like mini documentary or something. That's awesome. Uh, it fucking ruled, frankly. Um, so I, I may have seen it on there. That would make sense for the time <clears throat> period when I was watching. Uh, but I do remember, Certainly remember watching it. I vividly remembered about the first 30 to 40 minutes of this movie. Mm -hmm. And I remembered that he was Sammy Jenkins. Uh, Mm -hmm. That, that I I forgot. I I had forgotten that completely. The only thing I I I remembered straight off. And I, I just, I could just very, I don't know why it's probably, I've probably watched the first half of this movie a lot. It's probably why I remember it very well. Mm -hmm. I remembered about uh, probably up to and including my, my favorite scene is where he, he knocks on the guy's hotel room door and just waits till he sees the people flash and then kicks the door and 
ruins a guy's day. And it's yeah, not even that was guy. really funny. I I'd yeah. forgotten about that completely. I remember the only thing I remembered is Joe Pantoliano saying Lenny. That's literally the only thing <laughs> that I That's remember. That's a good Joey Pants. Thanks. And I guess I remembered like the the scenes in black and white with the with the kind of the the you know monotone score yeah. um just vaguely but that's the only thing i remembered is lanny um but yeah i mean let's let's get into it um i feel like uh this movie had its work cut out for it in terms of its structure and cuz you see you know we've we've seen movies that start at the end and end at the beginning or whatever but sure. this one was interesting because it was you know it was fragmented it, it 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 constantly like you saw the same thing several you know a bunch of times yeah. but i thought what was such a smart choice was you saw just enough to remember what was happening he he well, put just yeah. enough in there and that's that that lenny that early on that he hits him with that lenny is one of the parts where it overlaps a right. couple times so like Which just why case, i remembered it yeah in case you haven't seen the movie it's about a dude who has a, no short-term memory and he's trying to find the person who raped and murdered his wife so he can get his revenge right uh so he he can't make new memories so he has like a limited time of what he can basically hold in his head mm-hmm. which is interesting and then uh the movie is mostly backwards uh chronologically kind of showing scenes uh rewinding catching you up to a certain point and then rewinding again and catching you up to the beginning of the previous kind of mm-hmm. sequence yeah. and then interspersed are these like black and white sequences that are going chronologically and then eventually uh towards the end they meet up and the timelines converge so that's kind of what's going on so like parts it, it helps to orient the viewer to have a little bit of overlap of the right the beginning and end of those sequences so you yes you know what's going on and that that lenny moment is yeah. one of the first ones that you have to hear and see yeah. joey pants a couple times uh, in quick succession yeah and after watching this movie one of my first thoughts was like the only way to make this was the way he made it low budget independently there was no way a studio would ever green light this because on paper just what you described that shit would probably make a studio head like sweat bullets and just, they're just like, no way like that. Yeah, I don't, people people yeah. are going to be, people are going to be confused or bored or whatever. Um, but like, I, I think one thing that Nolan does really well is he takes these kind of heady concepts and he really does make them genuinely entertaining. And, you know, with the exception of Tenet, which I guess we can talk about because we'll, we'll probably, we'll I probably... didn't, I didn't watch it. I, I okay. thought about it and I, and then I did. Oh, okay. All right. Well, if you didn't watch it, then we don't have to. Um, I fucking hate that movie. That's <laughs> as our, as I'm our excited to see knows. it, but my, my hang up is I, I do, I, I feel like I'm owed a theatrical experience there. And oh, we've talked Dude, about this on the show. I know it's bad to, to, to hold on to things and like, uh, put things on a pedestal a little bit like oh i want to wait for the right moment to watch this because life is short well, and you're gonna die but on that one i'm like oh i was kind of robbed what i what yeah. i wanted to see the and... reason i think you shouldn't wait is because it's a bad movie but I, the theatrical experience putting <laughs> well, on a pedestal please put the, I, I dude i miss going to the movie theater so much and the fact that I'm the arc lights okay. are closing we have to I talk know. about that that's the worst that oh that God. sucks i'm not an arc light uh, I, I'm not a loyalist to the arc light. Okay. I, I've got one here in Chicago that I like. It's it's right off the the subway. It's easy to get to. Yeah. But I'm probably, if anything, a regal bitch. And right. um, I, I you know just from proliferation, I, I go to a lot of AMC's. But my first movie the theater experience is already scheduled. It's coming up in just under two weeks. It's going to be heat at the music box. Ooh. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to drive my car with my boner there. Cause it's on 35. I believe so. Oh my God. I, I want to so. drive out to Chicago and do that. It's, that, it's, that you fucking should. movie Come on is down. so good. <laughs> it's, it's going to be had a great ass. Oh, that's what I told Jackie. She's never seen it. I was like, you might like it. It's a great action movie. It's a great heist movie, but 
more than anything, it's a incredible showcase of Al Pacino yelling yeah. uh, throughout the whole film. And that, that scene in particular makes me laugh so fucking you know, hard. And it's actually I'm, pretty I'm apropos. It. It's actually pretty apropos that we're talking about he because Nolan his big I think his biggest cinematic influence is Michael Mann and you can see it in all of his work and that's what I think he's done such a he was so smart about is like I he was basically like I want to make you know high concept shit as if Michael Mann did it like with the grounding of a Michael Mann film and that's pretty much what he's done his whole career and I you don't can see, see it, it outside Memento. of just the Dark Knight. I don't really see it in Memento. Really, I see yeah. it in Memento. I see the look. I I think the framing. I think the fact that it's you know. I think it's also his scope too. I mean, when you break down Memento, it's a pretty small movie, but it feels oh, yeah. but it feels big. And a lot of that has to do, I think, with the structure and the aspect ratio and, um what this character is going through and how big it feels to him. I, I mean, don't if you know. Think, I don't, uh, I I think said, it, well, that's I don't, what I felt watching. It, I don't feel that at all. I think it feels like a dream. Um, I, I think it super captures, uh, the feeling of being in a dream. Um, yeah, ironically, sure. which, they, which is described by a character on screen in, in inception. Uh, when he's, when yeah. Leo's sitting outside in Paris and, and asked that uh, the former Ellen page, Right. Yeah. You know, how did we get here? In a dream, you don't get anywhere. You just right. appear, and that happens constantly in Memento. Yeah. And no, it the, does. You're right. The, the, I don't get a good sense of place from Memento either. Um, I get a vague LA feeling, but it feels like a nameless city. Uh, it, it feels like something that's remembered. So I guess what you're um, saying and, and is Michael feel that way. Right. And in, in Michael Mann's movies, it's, you really get a sense of place. That's you true. get a hard sense of place. In Michael right. Mann's you movies. definitely do. I, I look. I, I get it for for. The Dark Knight, that movie is heat for dumb people. Um, that's not that's not a, an insult, but that's what it is. Uh, the that Dark Knight Rises amazing. is Escape from New York if you took it seriously. Um, Dark Knight Rises is great too. I I, I don't know that. that it's great, but it is Escape from New York. All right, I will, I'll say it's very good. I, I I watched it again a year ago, and I was like, this holds up a lot better than I remember. I, I think Batman France. begins. I think Batman right. begins is 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 great i think dark knight rise dark knight is excellent and i think dark knight rises is very good um you watched it in france did you were you for the first time like when it, no you know? i just it just i like i was too tired to go to like i was in that weird i'm so tired i can't do anything but i'm too awake mm-hmm. so i was just like in this hotel room and i just put it on in france and end up watching like 90 percent of yeah it all of it right on french cable. i have to blow my nose forgive me <laughs> we're gonna keep that in that's uh that's a that's a that's a Carter original. You topped um, your level off. I heard it. Oh yeah, but no, I think yeah. So back to the you know the Michael Mann thing. I I think that like again, I th- I think Memento is yeah, it's a small movie, but at least to me, it like the score and everything around it felt big, and you can see the Michael Mann influences, especially with the score too. I mean, the kind of like the dramatic like like even the opening the titles of the movie like. So it, 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 like they remind me a little bit of Heat's opening titles with that just kind of lingering score. Heat's is like a little bit higher, but okay. But anyway, I, um, I, I see that. I hear. I I definitely hear that. Yeah. Um. I think that one of the things that I liked most about this movie is that I cared. Like I actually cared about Lenny, and I cared about finding out. Um about like, I cared about finding out what really happened and who was lying and who was telling the truth. And I think that looking and I, I'm trying to do it as spoiler free as possible, but looking at something like you, Tenet, you can, you can, Oh, for Tenet. Uh, I, all I'm going to say with Tenet is that I just didn't care. And there were things about it that felt like similar, like puzzle pieces to put together, but I just didn't fucking, I didn't give a shit. And I don't blame the actors because they're great. I really do blame Nolan for it because I feel like they're like with, with Memento, it felt like we, we were, we were grounded with this guy on this journey. And in Tenet, it felt more like Nolan was kind of having fun fucking with his audience and his fans 
And I just found that to be a little bit pretentious and a little, like, just honestly, like, uncool. Um, <laughs> and, I, you know, again, I, you, okay, I, that's, that's, all, that's all I want to say about Tenet. But, you, yeah, you don't have to hold back. This is a, 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 uh, a I'm show not holding, where I'm we only don't holding, believe in spoilers. I'm only holding back in the fact that I don't want to, I guess you're right. I don't want to, yeah, I know you, you say you don't believe in them, but I don't want to, you know, give too much. I, I don't, like, I don't care about, let, let me, let me back way up. I don't care about the plot of Tenet. Uh, I, I don't care right. on the scale of people who really love Christopher Nolan. I'm probably way in, in the back row. Uh, okay. I think he's closer right. to Ridley Scott than any other director. Cause he seems to, be mostly concerned with shit looking cool and nothing else. And I'm fine with that. I think he does that very well, but uh, I don't, I won't I, I, I'm a little surprised that you're surprised that he missed the mark with the story and making the audience care in his latest film. Cause I don't know that he does that. Well, any time, uh, you know, I think it's he, funny. he makes excuses to make cool shit happen. And I, and that some of my favorite shit is, cool shit on screen things looking right. cool to me right. is, is a large part of why i enjoy movies i, I right. often don't need a lot of character development or plot if, if something cool is happening I right and i think yeah i don't look i don't remember nolan's movies for the characters except for heath ledger in the dark knight that's pretty much it but like you know i do i i would say that like yeah he gets good performances from his actors too but i but i think that yeah i don't i don't think you go to a christopher nolan movie and remember him for the characters. You do that for like a Scorsese or a Tarantino or, you know, something like that. But I, but I think that, um, I think with with Memento, what was so impressive about, at least to me, the fact that like I cared was what I, I think honestly because of how I felt about Tenet and because of what I remembered, the little I remembered about Memento of it being this thing that you have to piece together and all this. I was like, oh shit, is it going to be one of those headache <laughs> movies that I'm just like, ugh, I don't care. But I was, I, it was the opposite. I, I definitely cared and I was engrossed and I was entertained and I genuinely, and, and there were little moments where I leaned forward and I was like, did anybody catch that? One in particular was when he's in the car with, with uh with teddy joe Pant joey pants and he's like write this down i'm telling you and he writes it down and it's a completely different handwriting than what we've seen yeah and i wanted to ask you about that because later we see him write down and it's the handwriting that we've always seen where the fuck did that come from and he makes a point of saying you have to you have to trust your own handwriting in his uh kind of narration in the black and white stuff as he's explaining his process and his right, systems right right okay so um I won't, go ahead. I, so so I, I don't know if ahead. that I don't know if that particular scene is him fooling Teddy by not writing in what he's decided his handwriting is, so that he knows not to ch to trust that note, or if he's having a, a moment of lucidity. Uh, I don't know. Ah, yeah, I, I don't know. But either way, it, it doesn't really matter because it, it, the no. the plot goes to the same place but it's an interest it's a very interesting detail the thing i didn't yeah. remember at all that that struck me was when uh, uh carrie ann moss grabs all the pens from her house and and, and yeah. takes them with her uh because she's like <laughs> you're not gonna remember any of this shit if you can't write it down i just stole all the fucking pens and then right uh you get the reveal in the in the in the scene that comes before the one you're thrust into of what actually happened that led to that uh, that's something that's kind of constantly happening in the in the movie is recontextualizing what you just saw. Yeah, there's a reveal in almost every scene, which I thought yeah. was really cool. And yep. you know, when when Carrie Ann Moss like kind of you know antagonizes him, he hits her, and then she comes back to you know fuck with him, um, and says that you know Dodd did it, which, which is that's also very interesting. But I I I did leave I did have some questions, and I feel like you are better at catching things than okay. i am Hit so my me. first question is who was the main antagonist was it carrie ann moss was she fucking with him the whole time or was it or or was it um whoever was on the phone like who and who and who was on the phone like i'm pretty sure either either joey was, pants is joey on the pants. phone it, okay. it, it, it it's from the text of the movie joey pants is on the phone i think so right because yeah. he gives him the picture of him right and tells him to take the call which yeah. he then later says, I took that picture. So 
Um, I don't think there's another way to interpret that other than a, he could be on the phone with no one. Um, right. But it seems like he's on the phone with Joey Pants. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Joey Pants is mostly not lying in terms right. of what he says. He's just been using Leonard to kill people. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and we don't know how long that's been but going then, on. But then Leonard kills him. Well, it's the yeah, first he, he thing pisses that him off in the right. wrong in the wrong moment there. Um, so I don't think I think when Leonard kills uh, the first dude, the first John G at the chronological in the in the film towards the end, but towards the beginning in the chronology of how things are going. Right. Yeah. He kills that Jimmy guy who's a drug dealer who is friends with and or maybe. Uh, Carrie Ann Moss wanted that guy out of her life. Yes. Um, I can't tell what their relationship was, if it was positive or not, but she ends up using him to get rid of Teddy, who's obviously been mixed up in that drug business somehow. Right. So when she realizes the utility of this guy, that he's not, he's not faking uh, to a point, but he, he's true. He actually is behaving this way all the time. Right. Uh, she's able to use him to get rid of Teddy. All right. That makes a lot of that, sense. I think that is the plot. That That is like the actual what happens during the movie. I think so, too. So did his wife actually survive the assault? And yeah. I, who I, assaulted I, her? I feel like. Well, actually, no, that, he says it. It's just two junkies that were there at the wrong yeah, time. Who, yeah, he then, okay. who then Joey Pants helps him track down and kill. Right. But it doesn't stick like nothing ever sticks. And so Joey Pants um, kind of realizes, okay, I could probably get this guy to do a lot of dirty shit if I can just get oh, him to God. believe the right wow. thing. And, and, and we don't, what we don't know is how long he's been doing that. It, and it right, seems like was, it's been a while. I was going to say, so we don't know how long he's been doing it, but we do know that this condition, he's, he has this condition. This, no, one's, no one's convincing him that he has it. He has no, He's it. convincing himself that he has it. From the Sammy Jenkins right. shit. He doesn't have the condition, right? But he he doesn't physically have it. It's it, I think what he says about he should be able to physically make new memories, but can't. I think that's true. I think yeah. he he doesn't physically have a a brain problem, but right. he's convinced himself so thoroughly that he does um, that it's functionally the same thing. But he can't learn new things. Yeah, and on top um, of that, and it's on purpose. Yeah, and on top of that, it's because of the behaviors. And it's because of his actions. It's like, it's yes. that ending monologue. He's basically telling him, like, he, he basically says, like, I'll have consequences for my actions, but but if I don't remember them, then yeah, I can keep then I, I can always... keep doing this shit. Yeah. So it's such an interesting thing because, like, you know, after rewatching the Dark Knight trilogy last year, it was it became very clear to me, and maybe I heard about it before I rewatched it, but it became clear to me that like Nolan is a really good he does a good job of of summing his movies up by like you know one or two word themes and like Batman Begins is about fear and The Dark Knight uh it's is about, about chaos oh, it's about whatever. heat yeah and and The Dark Knight Rises is about pain and for me uh I don't actually know I want to know what you think Memento is about with one word it's like I have it on the tip of my tongue and I know it's something, but I just don't know what. So I want to hear what you think. I think I think what he's trying to get thematically is what Joey Pants tells him, which is we all lie to ourselves to be happy. Everyone That's does it. it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think Lenny lies to himself to be miserable. Uh, right. But can't 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 get out of it. I mean that, that the trauma from the incident with his wife <laughs> fucked him up to an extent that he's psychologically has this condition it's right. not a physical condition right um but he so he we puts, think sorry go ahead he puts himself in harm's way too frequently uh for me to believe that he's faking all the time like i watched this movie with uh, a buddy of mine who hadn't seen it and we this was on 421 so in honor we we watched it high and uh like halfway through he was like this is such a mind movie. I was like, yeah, it this is. is interesting. It really is. And, and then at the I'm end, he's like, he's like, it high because I would have been fucked. His first thought at the end was, I just have to know how much he's faking. Like, how much of that is real? Right. And that's cool to see someone get drawn into that, um, like he did. Uh, but I think, I, I don't, I, I don't think he's faking at all. I think he, he is 
fully convinced himself that this is how he must live his life to deal with that traumatic uh, break-in and potential rape of his wife. Uh, I, and I yeah. think he killed her. With the, I think it ended up with her dying because he did the insulin thing to her. Yeah, I was going to say, I think, that's how, I think he did kill her with the insulin. And I think that <clears throat> as long as far as it, this shit's been happening, that Carrie Ann Moss and Teddy have been using him, clearly it's been a while. We don't quite know. But I think it's clear that the condition started after his wife's assault. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know, man. To me, the movie's about trauma. Like, uh, to, and, to and, me, and I guess the, yeah, and I, I guess, it. and I guess the, well, let's, let me rephrase it. It's about the effects of trauma. It's about what starts when you have something traumatic happen to you. And I don't know. I think it's such an original, um, approach to that subject. But truly, I really, I really think that, but you were going to say something. What? I, I, I think I, I see that, but I, I really think this movie is an excuse to, uh, do some cool stuff with, with editing. And I, and that was my, my main takeaway was that I, I swear to God, like I, I thought this movie was like really profound and interesting and deep as a 15 year old. Yeah. And this time rewatching it, I definitely did not feel that way. I was like, this is a very <laughs> interesting, uh, display of filmmaking craft. Yeah. Uh, and it's very so. good. I think and, so. and, and telling the story in this way where you're telling it backwards uh, puts you in the mind of the main character because he's experiencing every scene without knowing what came before and you are too. Right. And that's fucking nuts. That is crazy awesome. That's really but cool. I, and, and, but I feel like the story is specifically constructed to make that make sense. I feel like this was like a, like a big bowl session with – Nolan and his brother being like, what if we did a movie backwards like this? The dude couldn't remember stuff. And you as the well, audience can't remember shit because we don't show it to you till later. Yeah. But it still makes sense as a narrative over a two hour time period. And then they wrote to that, uh, th- that structure. That's what it feels like to me now. I, I think I, I had like a, like a AOL instant messenger, like a way status that was like, the world just doesn't disappear when you close your eyes. Like quote from the mentor. Like I thought that was awesome. And like, that's not as good as I thought it was. No, it's not. I, I agree with you there, but I will say that I slightly disagree with you on the fact that it's, that it's, you're saying that it's not about anything deep. I think it is, but I think that you can, t- and I think this is kind of a product of of who, and again, I, I don't know the man at all, but I think it's a product of who I gather Nolan to be from watching him in interviews and listening to commentaries. I think he's, it's interesting because he's obviously a very intelligent guy, but I, I don't think he's very emotional. No, and I he don't think he and, and, that like, shit like, at all. No, I don't. I don't think like I think it's kind of a classic British stiff upper lip thing. Like like if you you know j- just and and the reason I I I can talk about British stiff upper lip and 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 you know and see it is that like you know I'm ha- my mom was born in Liverpool. I was like my mom's a you know a, a pretty emotionally open person, but my grandparents i i you know we got that vibe from them as kids sometimes and like my mom g- gave off that vibe sometimes and everything and i feel like that is a thing and i think it comes through in his work like it doesn't mean that there's not emotional moments in his movies but i think there is a di- an emotional distance to just about all of them maybe not interstellar and maybe that was the one oh, that I disagree. Was like he he just like, I, I disagree i disagree <laughs> No, but let me let me let me finish because I I need to rewatch Interstellar. I haven't seen it in a while, but it felt like that was the most emotional of his movies. But it, it he went from like zero to a hundred with the emotion. It was like kind of beaten over the head, beaten over the he beat us over the head with it um, quite a bit. From again, from my memory of seeing it one time six years ago, so I need to see it again. But um, with this one. Like I, I, I think there is deep stuff there to unpack, but I don't think he's really interested in the emotion. I think he's way more interested in the visceral. That was one of my biggest problems with Dunkirk was that there was nothing emotional for me to connect to there 
and it was a purely visceral experience, which was his goal, and, you know, goddamn right he achieved it, because that movie, as you said, as a filmmaking craft similar to Memento, Dunkirk is very well executed, extremely well executed, like to a T. It's like a fucking clock. And yeah, yeah. but there's not a lot to connect to emotionally. And for my personal taste, I really like that and need that in movies. But again, there was something interesting happening here as I was watching it. I think I just kind of let go of needing to like really emotionally connect or whatever. And I think that helped me care. I think that helped me like invest and, and be more engrossed. Like I genuinely wanted to see what would happen, what happened. And maybe that's because the plot was very interesting or whatever. Um, but I, but yeah, I think Nolan is a lot less interested in character, um, uh, like character emotion and emotional exploration of things than he is in, um, as you said, like just very, very, very kind of, for lack of a better word, proficient filmmaking and technical craft. I don't know. I, I feel like I'm rambling, but I think you. No, get I, I feel like he's a visual genius. That's why I think he's closer to Ridley Scott than anything. I know Ridley Scott gets criticized a lot for missing the emotional mark or having his movies come off as cold. I don't always feel like that's true. I think I don't think that's true. Very for, for legitimately does not care about acting. Um, I don't think he has any interest in actors or acting at all. He cares about uh, visual styling really? and design. Yeah. I think he, he I mean, lucks he out. He might by care more. People, yeah. I don't think maybe he, that's I, true. I, think he does but... a, 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 I don't think it interests him. Wow. I see. I look at a movie like American Gangster and it's like, I don't know how you couldn't be interested. Like that movie gets by on its performance. I mean, no, it's, I also think it's a really interesting story, but like those performances from everyone across the board in that movie are great. But you, you cast two awesome leads though. I mean, yeah. Uh, and, and so you, you feel you're right. It's like, yeah, actors. yeah. It's you know, like he, gets, he, he got has, lucky there. Yeah. he has the carte blanche to do that. Right. Um, I mean, he, he got really lucky casting uh, Joaquin Phoenix and gladiator. Um, oh my yeah, What a performance. Because that, Holy shit. That role on paper doesn't, uh, doesn't play as, as well as he played it up. And, right. Uh, I mean, I, I I tend to like Russell Crowe, but I mean, he doesn't exactly have a reputation for being like <laughs> someone who's really dedicated to acting. Right. Yeah. He's uh he's good. Yeah, he's good though. Um, but I I, I haven't I, I haven't watched Gladiator in fucking I don't know fifteen years. Uh, a long we could, time. We could revisit that. I, I've seen it quite a bit. Um, yeah. I, I like Ridley Scott movies a lot. I, I, I like Christopher Nolan movies. I a do lot. too. I do too. I'm just I just don't buy into this guy as a genius. I, I think he's very interested in doing. But you cool just said things. he was a visual genius, so make it. So you, he he's, is. He's a visual. He's, a visual, he's a visual visual genius. wizard. Okay. Um, but it's not like he's he's doing something different with film that is like redefining the genre. I mean, hey man, I I, I, I think you could argue that Michael Bay's a visual genius, and I know that might make you I, laugh. I would I would absolutely argue that Michael Bay's a visual genius because I've seen Bad Boys Two and it rips your nuts off, dude. Bad Boys Two is awesome, and I don't care what anyone says. If you watch a Michael Bay movie, you know it within five minutes. Of course. And yeah. when I say within, I mean probably in the first minute. Oh, so absolutely. I don't care what anyone says. You can hate on his movies all you want. First of all, I think the first Transformers is fucking awesome. I love that movie. I think it's a lot of fun, and I love Bad Boys Two as well. I think those are probably my two favorite movies of his. Bad um, Boys Two is a legitimate great film. It's that a good movie. movie. It's a good movie. Did you see Bad Boys for Life? I did not. It's uh, not very, that I didn't it's, want to. I just it just kind of missed might it. be the best of the three. I'm not just <laughs> that, saying there's that. no there's no way it's better. I'm, there there dude, are some kills has, in Bad Boys too that are so fucking hilarious. I know, but and just over there the is some really good surprises in Bad Boys three. Number one and number two. I'm and uh, look, you're talking to the resident emotional guy. It's emotional and it has things to say about these guys doing it at this age that I found very interesting. That's, um, that that is interesting. I will I will submit Pain and Gain is a great overlooked film by Michael Mann, or I'm sorry, Michael. I Mann. okay with Pain and Gain. I absolutely loved that story. I read the whole articles about it. I thought it was fascinating and fucked up and dark and disturbing. And I I liked some of what he did in the movie. I didn't really like that he treated it like a comedy because i just thought it's the sub- funny but it's so funny. see i disagree i, I didn't oh, find the so subject funny i didn't find the subject matter funny i thought it was really fucked up and disturbing and i don't mean it i didn't find it funny and like i'm offended 
I just found I just was like he should have gone the dark, disturbing route, and it's so ridiculous. I don't know. I mean, it is just, no, I agree. It's just ridiculous. The dumbest people you know convincing themselves that they're smart. Yeah, is it's so funny to me. It's ridiculous for sure, but I I just I just like the stuff that really stuck with me in that movie was the was the disturbing shit, <laughs> which was few and far between. A lot of the stuff was played for jokes, and I was like, damn it, I wish that he did more with the because like the article, my jaw was agape the whole time i was like oh my god how could they fucking this is insane this is really fucked up and i was like and i the first thing i read i was like the first thing i thought was like this is gonna make a great movie and i feel like (laughs) am i gonna say he fucked it up no but i but i think that it would have been a little bit more interesting if he just leaned into the the dark and kind of I don't know. I it's uh, what what the that, fuck do I know? Because look, I mean, look, the actors are committed. I I think the the Rock does a great job. You know, like uh, yeah. So he, I mean, I I don't have a I don't have as big of an issue with Michael Bay as some people do, but you know what you're getting. I don't either. Into. I don't I don't expect uh, high art from him, but I think I people either. get really uh, really people into, do with Nolan. People people do. people get into the the sheen of intellectualism that Nolan has. Right. Uh, on his movies. And I, I just don't buy that it's that deep. I think this is an awesome movie, yeah. Memento. Um, there are some some moments of genuine sadness about Leonard and his story with his wife. For and sure. for about the first half of the movie, you, you're like invested in his revenge. But that is deflated a bit by how the story ends and how right. it unfolds. Um, right. Because it's not really uh, what's going on. So right. the the movie is about something. You do you're in on this mystery. You feel like you're uncovering something. The, the craft of it is so interesting. The way it's put together, right, is great. Yeah. Um, but it's not it, it's not a straightforward revenge tale, and it it gets a little bit convoluted towards the end. And I think it loses sympathy uh, for for Leonard at, at a certain point. Um, like I said, I think it's a great excuse to see can we tell a story backwards. And, and have it be compelling and can we tell a mystery that way right uh, I think I, I I interstellar that's a movie I've seen a lot man does that movie come up short on the emotions I mean right. that I, I think that movie rules insane. I watch it probably once a year I love the visuals of that shit but that movie is an excuse to put McConaughey in space and show some cool stuff. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. That is awesome. No, they're nothing. They're, they're but, nothing, but I don't think it, right. it comes together. And and every time I see it, no, I'm it's always uneven. struck. I remember thinking it was. Very oh, uneven. I'm always struck by the stuff in space is better than I remember. The stuff on Earth is way worse. And I've seen the movie. Right. They play it at the music box in '70 pretty often. I've seen it like oh, wow. five okay. times or so in the theater. Like I really enjoy Jesus. it, but it, you it, really like it, that movie. I do, but it's a it's a purely a visual uh, experience. It's it's a it's a fun movie. It, it it just falls short of hitting that emotional mark. Right. Um, the Prestige is again a movie we've talked about that I think people are actively pranking me when they tell me uh, they like. And so, do uh, you hate it, or are you just like it's fine? It, it, it's like fine, but like I don't see how you can watch that movie and like watch what happens and think it's good like it's all right there's a lot of interesting that was another one i saw once in theaters and i literally i don't i remember like some details but really like rarely barely the detail you need to know is that movie's entire everything about the story that movie hinges on cloning being real and a guy being able to do it yeah no Um, i remember that right yeah like which is i I remember the last shot when it's like all the christian bales or whatever the fuck Uh, um so I I don't I just don't buy that he's he's you know he's like pulling these concepts together and, and making all these statements and and doing all this yeah I mean shit. one thing I would say is I want to ask people like has a Nolan movie ever made you cry and I would imagine for most people the answer would be no the closest I think and I wasn't close to crying but I'm saying the closest I think he got in my opinion is Inception with two with two moments one. DiCaprio's arc of letting go of his of his dead wife and and first of all DiCaprio's you know the fucking best actor working right now and so of course he's gonna bring in and make you feel something but the stuff was with uh with Cillian Murphy and Pete Postlewaite when he's like are you upset that I'm that I w- didn't turn out to be you and he says no I'm upset that you tried and like that's 
very like I'm getting chills talking about it right now. It's that's really scene. moving. It's a very I good mean, scene. Very good again, scene. Fucking gangbusters cast impossible late. Late late yeah. late in his I mean, life come on. too. Fucking yeah, God, very right. late in his life. But I, mean, I, I think, think Hans Zimmer is doing a lot of the emotional lifting in Inception. Yes, well. and I, I, and would, I love and I love Inception. Inception's I, an awesome. Inception's awesome. my favorite Nolan movie, and I and I actually yeah. would go so far as to say it's a masterpiece. Like I really, I love it. Really but love but again, it. Inception seems like an excuse to have a fight in a hallway where the hallway is spinning. Um, <laughs> it seems like the entire movie is crafted to make that scene make sense. I'm okay with that. I just I don't, don't think that. I don't, I don't think we're yeah I think it's awesome I, right? I don't think we're getting more than that and I think a lot of people do I think that's fair I I, I think that's fair I think but that's I think what makes you know not to sound so happy-go-lucky and you know all that shit but like that's what makes movies and watching movies and talking about them so great is that people can interpret like I mean think about it you, you were like I think memento is about lying to yourself to make your to make you feel better and I was like well I think it's about the effects of trauma and i think we're both right like i, 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 I that, think that that's in there yeah that's all in there I, th- I think they're both in there is what i'm saying and i think and i think part of why nolan can be so hotly debated like this is because he's one of the biggest directors working right now and because he's the one of the only directors who not only has the carte blanche to always shoot on film but to make original 200 million dollar plus movies like that is like i'm and like think about this for a second scorsese couldn't get the irishman made at a traditional studio yeah and nolan got tenet made at warner brothers yeah. i mean that's a big fucking deal oh yeah the irishman always had de niro pacino and pesci attached and scorsese i mean are we fucking kidding like that, I agree. I can't believe it. Like, but and they, and they, there was no other way, except for them to go to Netflix. There was no other way. And the flip side is Nolan going to Warner Brothers, and basically saying to them like, "This is my next movie," and they say, "Great." You know, I know yeah. there's ins, there's there's details and ins and outs that we don't know, and 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 there's specifics and stuff, but like that's a that's a huge deal, and I and I think regardless of what you think of his movies, Nolan's movies, and I know we both like them. Um, you know, he, he, I, I give him credit for fighting for the theatrical experience and for keeping, you know, film as a, you know, viable shooting option for filmmakers. Um, but I think that he comes across as pretty self-serious and, yeah. and yeah. stiff. And I think that that is where you and I can get a little like everybody calm down. Yeah. And I, 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 I really like, do. I think yeah, it's because yeah. of the way he carries himself, his fans or whatever, but I genuinely believe that his fans probably wouldn't be so like, eh, if he was a little bit more, I don't know, for lack of a better word, chill. I guess I try not to judge work based on like the people who like it, but it is great right. with Christopher Nolan where you just get you just get a lot of opinions like that. And I think his yeah. movies draw you into the mystery so you do feel a part of what's going on, especially like for Memento. sure, like you, definitely. You get definitely. drawn in, does a great job of pulling you into that story. You want to see what happens. There's a lot of surprises, a lot of twists mm-hmm. and turns. You you feel like you're actively uncovering the story instead of just right. being being apart from it, which is right. amazing. Um right. but again, I mean I I think Memento is awesome. It is uh, awesome. I agree. I think it's it's a, definitely, it's, it's, for me, still good. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's just very, very different I- I- than I thought it would be as far as its uh, its goodness. Um, I don't know that I really thought about this being a showcase of filmmaking craft uh, when I thought that this was a, you know, like a top 10 movie for me. Mm-hmm. And it is. And and, and it, it, it super is. It's really a showcase of editing. And how you can yeah. use the 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 medium of cinema to tell interesting stories in interesting ways. I agree. Uh, this movie lost best editing to Black Hawk Down at the Oscars. Wow! And you I, know I what? think Black Hawk Down rules a Ridley Scott movie. It is. But uh, yeah. I, I I know the Academy Awards just happened this weekend. I have never called. I, I studied editing in film school. I've never been able to call who's going to win best editing. 
for the last 20 years. There's it's always, like the it's I always kind of a surprise. I, I, the yeah. one I called a while back was Whiplash. I just knew that would get it, and it did, and rightly so, by the way. Um, from what I remember about Black Hawk Down, that was a very well-edited movie, but I think... Oh, without question. But I think sometimes kinetic editing can be a little more eye-catching than something that, for lack of a better word, takes its time. And I think, I guess, Memento, I guess. and I, but I, but what's interesting about Memento is that I think it falls right in, like literally right in the middle, and it's, and I call it kinetic because, um, of the little flashes that we see of the moments that we just remembered, and then back to the black and white stuff. Um, but I also think it takes its time because of literally, literally because of the structure that it's moving backwards. The, the, the assemblage of the film is the crux of the film. That right. should be best editing. That is right. crazy to not have that. I, that, no, I, I cannot figure that I out. I agree with you. I think it should have won over Black Hawk Down, but I'm saying that it falls right in the middle, and I think sometimes people are drawn in by kinetic editing. That's why I think Whiplash is a great example of something that is right in the middle. I mean, that last scene, the editing in that last scene is fucking brilliant, but every a lot of the other stuff, it's like it plays out, that movie is a horror movie. Yes, like, and it's and the last and the last scene is is some of the best shit around. The last scene is might be my favorite thing filmed in the last ten years. Like it's I, I, I very abs- good. I leapt out of my chair, like and almost cheered when I saw that movie for the first time in theaters. And I took, I saw that movie three times in theaters, and I took two more people to see it over the course of the next few months when it was in theaters literally and i love the whole movie but just to see their reaction at the end that was yeah. my main goal was just to kind of right when the movie cuts to black was to turn to them and say huh well like, i'm not kidding like i again i loved the whole movie and i couldn't wait to always see it again because it just it sucks you right in but my main goal was to and I didn't say anything. I wasn't like, oh, you got to go to the... I was just like, just you fucking wait. In my head, I was like, just you fucking wait till the end. Holy <laughs> shit. Like, dude, that ending is so good. And I, I'm sure we'll have him back on the podcast and he can tell the story. But Khalil saw that movie in theaters. And he was like freaking out at the end of it. Like stressed. Like, yeah. like, he, yeah. like, he, he, like someone had to go get him a glass of water. Like he was like, oh, like, like hyperventilating. Breathe into a bag. Literally, yeah. Like that's what he told me. And he's because he, he watched it again recently, like a year ago, and was like, oh, it's so good, man. I forgot. But he hadn't seen it since because of that experience. Like, it's yeah, that movie's yeah, insane. It's, it's amazing. Um, but yeah, Memento. With, with Memento. De- go ahead. Um, yeah, as we wrap up, I, I read Ebert's review. I don't know if you did, but he. I actually didn't, and I'm the one. Uh, he Ebert. he he liked it. He gave it three stars. I um, figured it was like a three star, not a four star. Yeah, he he said that the second time through isn't as fun when you know it's going to happen. He's like, the, the once is enough for this one. Is like how he kind of ended the review, and I was like, huh, that's that's, that's interesting. That's fair. And then I was rewatching parts of it today, and I was like, you know what, this having some space between viewings of this movie was good for me now. Yeah. That's it's like, I'm, I see both it's, sides. Yeah. Like I, I love rewatching movies a lot, but me this too. one worked a lot less well on the second viewing. Mm-hmm. When I watched it last week, it was working like fucking gangbusters. It was awesome. Right. Uh, rewatching again and experiencing it again. Um, but I, I get that. Like it, it does. It's a mystery movie. Once you solve the mystery, um, what are you going to stay around for? Some of the stuff yeah, is, is interesting. Some it's, of it's really funny, but you kind of know the beats a little bit. Right. Um, it takes you, it takes it out of the, but if you don't solve it, so it then you keep watching it. That's kind of yeah. like, I feel like after this conversation, I would be more likely to rewatch it than you would. Probably not, be, not because I didn't solve it. Like we pretty much solved it on this, on this show. But I think I came in. I came into this episode talking to you with more questions than you did. I don't think you asked. I don't think you had any. Like no, I don't. There's nothing. I don't have a lot of questions about this. Well, this you have movie. a bigger brain than me. You have a big brain. <laughs> um, I mean, I, you know, we, we can laugh. We we can laugh till the cows come home. But that's just the way it is. <laughs> but it's it's good. I, I like. Yeah. Like I said, I this is a movie that I feel like. I mean, I'm a little surprised it got nominated for the Academy Awards because those tend to... The Academy, if you don't know this, is filled with old people. So yeah. 
something avant-garde like this, and this is pretty light for like experimental movie making, but for the Academy, this is pretty fucking out there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's almost like I, it's nice to just be included at that point because it's yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure he and path. he and his brother got a screenplay nomination for it. Really? I'm pretty sure they did. I mean, once you um, know a little bit more about movie making, um, you know when you're no longer 15. Right. Uh, it's a little less impressive that they were able to make this movie because you shoot all this shit out of sequence anyway. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it's all, it's all in the assembling of it that the, the whole thing yeah. comes together. And it's a big deal when something is actually in chronological order. I remember when Ron yeah, Howard, like when, of. right. When Ron Howard won best director for beautiful mind, they shot it in chronological order. And the person announced that as he was walking up to the stage. Yeah, that's fucking and I was wild. like, "Damn, he does crazy. deserve best director." Then <laughs> that's yeah, that's fucking yeah. that's really t- that's that's like I can't fathom. And you know what? I'm sh- I, I don't get it. I'm sure it was a cre- like I'm sure it was a creative choice, and clearly it paid off. That's a movie I need to rewatch. But Russell, I remember that movie was like I loved it when I saw it. I saw it I think once or twice in theaters, and I really liked it. I never saw it in um, theaters, but I think I bought the DVD sight unseen and just just watched it. I bought the DVD too, and I remember um, that was a big upset when Denzel won over him. But rewatching Training Day recently, man, he deserves it. <laughs> Holy shit, what a performance! That movie kicks ass. Yeah, that, that it, movie kicks ass. And he is ass. so fucking good in it. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. that that's an interesting movie because. Uh, I do. Li- I think that movie rules. Um, I, I kind of like that director a little bit. Antoine um, Fuqua, yeah. He's he's not like a prestige director. He's like he's like a dumb guy action director. But that movie but is he, just he is just shoot. two hours of Denzel. Yeah, yeah. He can shoot. He knows how to shoot action, which which yeah. shows up. And and one of the main critiques I've read over the last twenty years is that Christopher Nolan does not know how to shoot action. Um, and I don't know that I agree with that, but I, I don't get where it's coming that. from. I don't. I don't agree with that. Where do you think it's coming from? It, he doesn't have a great sense of space during uh, set pieces. Uh, that he, I understand. He tends to rely a little too much on quick cuts to inject. I understand that because the geography that. is like, and, and and I and if you notice, a lot of his set pieces are are they're moving. Oh yeah. You know whether it's like the free the the highway on tunnel in the dark night or you know the snowmobiles in Inception. Um, or even the fucking hallway shit. Um, but like, I, I think one of the best action directors is John McTiernan. I mean, Die Hard, you, we've talked about this before. Die Hard, you know where everything is. You know where every single... Fucking Predator takes place in the woods. I was going to say Predator, you you know where everything is too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Predator, Die Hard. I mean, yeah, he's a really, really, really exceptional action director. (laughs) Yeah, he went to literal director jail. Yeah, well, he just literal jail. Yeah, yeah. What did he do? <laughs> was it tax evasion or That's something? Good, or like, good question. I feel like it was something really kind of bad. Like, I think it was either... Please hold. <laughs> he was kind was... of... No shit, it was bad. He went to jail. <laughs> I feel like it was like manslaughter or something. Like, like really, uh, it was... Manslaughter or... would surprise me. I'm going to say it's some flavor of fraud as I'm looking it up. Um, I feel like it was either like... Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. What he, was it? He pleaded guilty to perjury and lying to an FBI investigator. Oh, wow. Okay, in so. regard to his hiring of the private investigator, Anthony Pelicano, in late 2000, to illegally wiretap the oh. phone calls of two people, one of whom was Chris, or I'm sorry, Charles Roven, the a producer. producer of his, what? No, Roven, R-O-V-E. Yeah, Roven. Charles, Ch- Charles Roven's a producer. Yeah, he's a producer, a co-producer of his dystopian science fiction action film remake, Rollerball. Oh, God. Uh, starring Chris Klein. Yeah. He was incarcerated was for just under a year. He yeah. Oh. Bankruptcy. Um, well, he'll probably never yeah. work again. How the mighty have fallen. Yeah. Uh, he wow. has not, <laughs> he doesn't have a, a director credit since 2003's Basic, which Yikes. is a uh, re- reuniting of... Uh, John Travolta, uh, John Travolta Sam Jackson, and Sam yeah. Jackson. <laughs> Damn, man. Well, hey, you play with matches, you get burned, right? <laughs> and hey, that's a fucking John Travolta quote from Pulp Fiction. We got to end on that. All right. <laughs> done and done. Memento, still good. 
from both of us. Um, please subscribe to us on iTunes. Give us five stars, whatever you want. Um, just make sure you can say whatever you want. Just make sure you give us five stars. Find us on Instagram at Still Good Show. Um, check us out on our website, stillgoodshow.com. Shoot us an email, stillgoodshow at gmail.com. Next week, we are going to be doing something fun. Um, we're going to be doing another episode of counter-programming. So what we're going to do throughout the summer is uh, revisit films from the summer of 2001 that were playing on the same weekend. Some may have even opened at the same on the same weekend. And we're going to review them. Um, kind of just revisit them and, and not only talk about them, um, but like how we feel about them, but how we, how, how, how and why we think they were hits back then and why, you know, maybe one survived and one didn't or this or that. Um, because, you know, we all miss the theatrical experience a lot. We figure there's a lot of nostalgia for it and we want to talk about it. Um, and we're also going to do, you know, some food episodes and stuff like that. So got a lot more stuff coming for you for Bear Kennedy. I'm Andrew Carter. Thanks, everybody.